if you notice, Jay and I will be making all the decisions today. <laughs> so, Lord help us. Uh, Ricky always uh, Mr. Thacker has informed well. us that he will be a few. You want to come up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Mark, just got, Mark got promoted? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Thacker is, uh, is pro may not make the meeting, but he, uh, he's had some uh, professional things come up. Mr. Soto is on his way, and so is Mr. Weissire. So they will be here momentarily. That's why we kind of pushed as much as we could uh, on the timing. But the agenda is pretty full, Chairman. And the agenda is full, so I'm sure they'll get a lot of good information. <laughs> but right now, you get to Mr. Wheeler and myself. Okay. Our undivided so attention. You got us. Uh, well, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Dr. Pace, we have three projects to update you on this afternoon. <coughs> Harmony Middle School, Neo City, and Den John. And the Den John presentation will be the precursor for the GMP that you'll see coming at the next board meeting. Uh, so we'll start with Harmony Middle School. And I'll ask Patrick Rausch with Schinkel Schultz to join us at the table to talk about the project goals and objectives. I know we just fed the next class of leadership Orlando today. I, didn't, oh, I wasn't yeah. able to make it, but yeah. you were part of the last class. Right? Yeah, that was great. So, um, good afternoon. Um, we want to touch on project goals and objectives, and this is a slide that we've kind of seen throughout the course of the design and the construction. It's really just reiterating kind of what the, the thought was from the, the concept. Um, again, it's a refinement of a previous prototype. We've made refinements over the years regarding admin, media, things that kind of lessons learned and improvements. We also looked at upgrading the 21st century areas on the second floor. Uh, we're also adding additional practice field uh, to the high school. And we're also um, looking at the exterior design and really wanted to have a unique character to the exterior, but one that also blended in with Harmony High School. So those are the overall kind of objectives that we had uh, on the project. Thank you, Patrick. We'll ask uh, Wade Wilson with Moss and Associates to join us uh, to give us a construction update. Wade? Hi. Hi. How are you, Jay? Um, so I've got a project status update. And you can see here this is a picture of the a recent picture of the site. Um, we were nearly complete with all the tilt wall. Actually, the tilt wall is complete except for the punch list and the structural steel. We are finishing up in building two right now. It's nearly complete. We've begun fireproofing. Uh, we're doing the metal stud framing. It's begun and we started our windows today. We got a big delivery yesterday and started installing them today for a mock-up. Uh, and the roofing is ongoing as well. We've started that. How far below budget do you think you'll come out this way? How far below budget? <clears throat> I'm hoping we can save uh, some money. Well, that's I don't, right now I don't, <laughs> right now I don't have a, an exact number I could give you. More than a million or more than two million? Less, way less than a million. We're, we're currently tracking well on our ODP. Okay. Uh, our goal is 30%, so we're tracking well towards that. Looks like we're going to hit that goal. We'll continue to push that, yeah, and about, we'll continue to look for opportunities as we work through the project. But I, don't, I don't have a, a good number I can give you right now. A million's a good number. <laughs> <laughs> or more. And we have a topping off uh, that's being planned, topping off celebration. Uh, I believe it's safety. 20 23rd, I believe. Yeah, October 23rd. October 23rd. Yeah, we've got that celebration. Uh, we're going to have a, a dinner or a lunch for everybody at the site. So, and the plan, uh, Mark is asking, and this is something we're going to continue through the end of the project. A plan for a smooth turnover on 6:30. And the number one thing to me is, is as a builder, is schedule, schedule, schedule. I can't say that enough. We're updating our schedule every uh, two weeks out there. Since May, we have had uh, 64 inches of rain, which is you know a lot of rain. It's and it, than, at, it's better than 65 inches. It's true, <laughs> but at a time when we're doing this, the outside of the building, you know, actually is tilting the building. But I'll say, even though we've lost time on that, we have been able to to reorganize things, and we're actually. Right on schedule, actually, a couple days ahead right now. Of course. Excuse me, Dr. Pace. Do, you, do we have a planning principle for this school yet? No, sir. When do we anticipate? Yeah, well, that was a great question. We anticipate advertising in November so that we can have the person identified in December with the transition starting in January. Thank you. 
One, one thing that's really helped us out here to, to get this smooth landing is, is open communication. Uh, we've had good communication with the architect as well as the school district. And every week our, our meeting is a, it's a good cohesive team. So we get answers quickly. Uh, we're not waiting for a long time, so that's great. Um, and we're gonna need down the road, the next step's gonna be a meeting to discuss uh, the move in and how we're gonna do that. Now that's probably January maybe, but we'll need to start looking at that. And Dr. Fritz up. has done a great job communicating with the team about some kind of lessons learned with Tehopa Kalaga High School and obviously Mr. Clinch and the rest mm -hmm. of the team. Um, but we have, for example, identified that we need to make sure we are, are hiring our custodial team earlier in the process than we did for Tehopa Kalaga High School so that they're on hand to help out with just the basic ffe &E and final phases of cleaning and that kind of stuff. So really taking advantage of, of this opportunity to learn and plan more effectively. It's going to be really important for Michigan now. So when we, relative to custodial staff, I, I get that, but when, you know, when schools close like in Christmas, are we hiring a, an outside vendor to go and just clean all the schools, make them sparkling so when they come back, they're good to go? Our teams take advantage of times when students aren't on campus to do some of that sparkle, um, particularly all summer. Not as much over the winter, yeah, yeah, but definitely over the summer. Yeah, because over the winter they want to get their time off too. Exactly. So that's why if you hire them in September, you get their time. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, you can see our team there working on the schedule, so that's why you've got schedule, schedule, schedule. <laughs> okay, well, okay. great. Thank you, Wade. Uh, we'll now transition back to the design team, and we'll ask uh, Ms. Kelly Griffith, our project interior designer, to join us at the table to talk about our color selections. No feng shui, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So uh, before we get into the interiors, we want to get a recap on the exterior also. Um, so what we have today is, uh, this is the rendering, um, very similar to what you all have already seen. We didn't change the exterior design, but what we have done since then is pick the specific color swatches. So just like we've tried to do before, we tried to pick something that blended in nicely with Harmony High School, but still had its own own character. And the images on the bottom are the uh, the paint swatches um, that we selected for the exterior. So again, it matches the consistent with what you all have seen already. It's just kind of following. How does the roof like Galilee and gold? Or something? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just, wait till you see the inside. <laughs> okay. The exterior colors, uh, we pick the colors so they won't bleed right. uh, and wash out. Very important for exterior colors yeah. that they hold up. Yeah, it's very low maintenance colors. So you're not, you're not, it's, you don't pick a red or something that fades very quickly. It's mm -hmm. easy to maintain. It's like des desert colors. Yeah, it's a very neutral color, easy to maintain. It, it's nice, a nice finish. Sure. And ties in well with the high school exactly. colors sure. as well. Um, so this image shows the uh, courtyard. Uh, view from the courtyard here, you can see the, the wetlands and the bus loop here in the foreground. And again, this just shows how we're having neutral colors, same colors from the front. I'm building one, it blends in, very neutral neutral palette uh, for the outside. Any questions on the exterior? Good. Uh, so I'll hand over to Kelly. I know she's been working with, uh, with Mike Allen and facilities to kind of go through the interior selections and I'll kind of hand it over to her to give you kind of where we are and, uh, update on, on where we are. Surprise, Mr. Here. Booth hasn't picked up blue and orange. <laughs> <laughs> Cobalt blue and, and uh, burn orange, right? That's the color. Based on the school colors, yes, we have um, that is the main palette here. Um, so we'll start with the gymnasium where we have a neutral wood tone uh, sports flooring with the accent colors of the blue and orange. Uh, the bleacher colors are going to be in the blue and orange as well with the wall padding to be the navy blue and the fabric uh, ductwork to be in the blue. The bottom uh, left corner there, you'll see the overall carpet. Yep, we good. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the bottom is the overall carpet that we have throughout the um, space. And then in the center, we have the VCT color options, color scheme, with also the paint throughout. We used um, the three colors. We have a light blue, um, the regular navy blue, and the orange for the paint colors. The top right is the restrooms and locker rooms, wall tile and floor tile. And then in the locker rooms, we have a orange locker material, metal. And then the plastic top and side panels for the lockers is going to be in the blue. And that's for both uh, locker rooms. Male the bottom right, we have the acoustical um, fabric panels that will be in the band and on the vocal rooms. And then the millwork is going to be a light maple wood, the top of the base cabinets, and then the top 
to go with more of the Wrangler theme, we have more of a rustic, um, copper anodized mm. laminate countertop. Building one overall finish plan. Uh, we used a combination of the three accent colors to do wayfinding along with the paint. So each quadrant is a different combination for better wayfinding. Building two overall finish scheme. Um, we used primarily the um, orange and blue for the school colors in this building um, to where you have more of the sportsman with the gym. Here is the overall uh, enlarged plan for the gymnasium. So you can kind of get the detailing of where we have the blue and the orange mm -hmm. as well. And here we have the interior elevations for the cafeteria space. We highlighted the um, food service lines with the orange accents. The top square rectangular is the acoustical panels fabrics. That's the pattern that we went ahead with. Bring it, uh, liven it up with some of the colors. I gotta say, I'm starting to think we're being tricked, Mr. Wheeler. Toho <laughs> oh, High School, we ended up with her colors. Harmony <laughs> 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 Middle, we're ending up with his colors. Uh, no, we're ending up with the same colors as Harmony High School. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He got it. He's still looking for garnet and gold somewhere. They left it in Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Here, <laughs> we have the serving line and kitchen, keeping with the Wrangler theme, we have um, a corrugated awning metal panel over the serving line entries. And you didn't want to call it the saloon instead? Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> joking. <laughs> she she the camera. Oh, she's yeah. The back kitchen wall, we did a more of a pixelated um, tile pattern with the school colors. I like it. And then here is just a more detailed um, for the serving line where we have more of a uh, copper rustic um, laminate face for one and we have a rustic wood plank so for I, the other. As long as we talk about cafeteria, I got a Dr. Pace question. I know we're moving ahead of ourselves. Do we anticipate this school having one lunch or two lunches? Three. Three? It's middle school. I get I understand that. Okay. I think they'll have three. Three lunches. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. And then for the corridors, this is how um, some of the accent walls are, where we have some um, highlighted with the different colors for the wayfinding into the vestibules and down the corridors. And then the last thing. You could probably get by with two lunches. The cafeteria inside is designed for SRO standards. Um, like 1,338 students divided by three is like 400. Right. Six. But you do have that outdoor dining area on this facility that's really nice because you have that second floor. And, and it's. You could probably do it in two. Yeah. And the outdoor dining is only partially outdoor. One wall. That's is what it, yeah, that's what I mean. You yeah, only have the one wall. It's very protected. You know, if you had inclement weather, you can still use the outdoor dining. So you could probably squeeze by with Well, I guess that'll be something for the planning principal and Mr. Allen and Dr. Fritz to all decipher it. It's nice to have options, though. Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. So the last two pages here, we have the elevations of the acoustical fabric for the band room and the vocal room. And then the last page is for building two so at double well, heights. Wait, like band room. Will this school have an auditorium? No, just a, a band practice room. So is the cafeteria like a cafetorium kind of thing? It is. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. And then also a gym. Okay. Okay, thank you. And then voting two, this is the corridor, um, just showing how, um, with this double height space, how we broke up with the color accents to break up the height of the space. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, primary. great. Well, thank you, Kelly and Patrick. Great update. We'll now transition over to Neo City Academy. I'll ask Philip Donovan Thanks, and Kathy Stout to join us at the table. Uh, so, Philip will start us with uh, taking us through the project goals and objectives and okay. the, the schedule and then uh, Ms. Stout will take us through the interior uh, colors. First of all, I apologize for being late. My father was literally just discharged from ICU so I'm running from that to here. He's fine. But um, 
what uh, is the timeline okay on the project? I missed that at the beginning, I'm sure. Everything's For Harmony? Track along. Yeah, yes, there's yes. just a little ahead of schedule, even with all the rain we've had, but yes. Okay. They're tracking well. Good. Thank you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, we always like to recap the project goals, STEM curriculum, 500 suit station, 45,000 square feet, highly immersive learning environment. So we want to be flexible, scalable. That's how we looked at finishes and then the interiors and <coughs> the exterior um, feel high performance. Uh, we're, we're hoping to um, track zero energy, but at the end of the day, it's, it's heavily reduced energy costs over a, a standard uh, building. We got to an executed GMP last time we met, um, and so now we're focusing on uh, finalized, finalization of material design and uh, construction schedule. So again, the project goals and objectives that we highlighted from the very first meeting, this was the lens that we looked um, through for every design decision. The stakeholders laid these out, the Osceola community. Um, so this, the rounds of uh, material vetting and colors and finishes went through this as well. Design schedule, we're here in the construction phase, uh, moving along very well. Site plan, where we are, the, our, our current building up here in the northwest um, with future expansion to the east. So we'll go right into materials. Uh, Kathy's going to present. We've got them up digitally, but also here as well. So, we'll um, so our, our main flooring throughout the majority of the space is going to be a luxury vinyl tile luxury being a relative term, um, is to step up from the BCT. How they, with the colors we chose are sort of more of a wood look to bring in nature, bringing the outdoors in, um, coordinating base colors for each. Then um, we have a walk-off mat adjacent to the darker <coughs> tile as you come in. We'll be using a combination of these two throughout the space, um, but the main corridor would be this lighter tone. So then the carpet, we have this would be in the administrative areas and general paint throughout. We have some accent paints which we'll get to on the other board. And then um, in the incubator spaces when you meet, when they converge in the center, what we're going to have is these um, hexagon tiles. They're not actually that size. They are that shape. Um, and this is a design element that pulls in one of the screening, um, the screens on the facade of the building. So we're trying to sort of bring in that. Um, not shape throughout the so, yeah, it brings in a theme that we've been running through the design as well as the, the biophilic um, design ideas that we've been with. By, by what? Biophilic meaning um, of nature. So oh, bringing in even just colors and textures. You didn't know that, Mr. Wood? Biophilia. <laughs> biophilia. So. Biophilia. Oh, biophilia. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something different. Though. That's a that's a good <laughs> use of a It's like, like an SAT, it's like an SAT word. Make sure you I don't suffer a biophilia. <laughs> I've never heard that. Okay. So it's, it's, it's using nature's it's bad, patterns bad and colors thing. found in nature, and it, it stimulates the brain and the learning environment. So even just a color that you find in nature um, helps you to absorb um, and expand your, your thought processes. Yes. So we're, you know, we're on the back on the accent colors. So the bright orange, the idea of the sunrise, um, sunset, and this we're going to be using very minimally, and it'll be on the structural, the exposed structure on the interior and on the railings. The other three accent colors we're going to be using um, in classrooms and throughout the space. The uh, at each of the think spaces, we have two different color schemes that will be alternating in the think spaces in sort of a color blocked um, manner where we have the coordinating color of laminate and, and uh, paint on the wall, and which would transition to this with the white paint that, was, that wraps around and that's writable surface on um, one side of it. So um, then as there are remaining materials, we, we have um, a solid surface countertop where we have coffee service, um, the teacher break facilities, any place there's going to be um, a sink, and then another wood grain laminate with, again, the hex hexagonal backsplash tile. Well, we've got a series of renderings. Um, we really took, we vetted this with um, stakeholders and, and Mr. Meachin um, quite a bit on these finishes. We wanted to bring in the concepts of nature, but also um, leave it a little bit more simple to allow the processes and the learning um, and the, pr the products of that learning to really expose themselves in the school. 
Uh, so here we'll flip through some of the way that the ways the carpet will be arranged in the spaces and the accent colors that would go along with those. Um, here's a picture of that mixer space. This is the big double height space that uh, is gathering for the school. So you can see highlighting the, the skeleton of the building. So it's also, uh, the concepts are also about exposing the um, different systems within the building. So you see light fixtures above, um, some super graphics. We're working on environmental graphics this week with the, the school as well. This is the incubator space. So this is down at the west end of the building, the double height space down there. And the, where those two young ladies are actually standing is, is a carpeted area with the hexagonal tiles. That's actually where the um, students will be working on the IT um, components. So they'll be pr taking care of their own um, systems in the school. That so you can see where we're using carpet to designate special areas. Um, otherwise, we have the, the wood grain pattern that runs throughout the school. Maybe this should have been the bees. Looks like the iron. Like it. Uh, and this is a this is a view <laughs> of one you. of the labs, <laughs> and this is the flex lab. Um, so you can see what we have is the general laboratory space here, but the colored areas are the think, create, and impart spaces. So we've got the tiered spaces for um, collaboration with internally and with out, other outside groups from outside of the school, and then two-person think rooms and four-person team rooms. The flex lab is a classroom. Correct. Okay. It's a classroom, and that it's flex because. Any portion of the day, yeah. Okay. okay. So here's a more of an aerial shot of the view um, of the entrance to the school. So you've seen this view from below, but this is more. Um, we've got the drone lawn uh, down there, um, the covered uh, solar canopy. So we've got blues and um, grays and whites that. The solar canopy was the solar being captured to use used for. That'll be plugged right back into the system, so, so um, it'll so offset the energy. So specifically for electricity. Use. Correct. That's about a 96 um, kilowatt array we're on that. Water, we're heating water. Uh, well, we have electric. Um, we have uh, gas heat reheat, but we have a few water heaters as well. So anything, so it's there's just there's no solar water. Heater. There's no solar water heater on here. Correct. I believe, and then there's that view from the ground level. Is there enough solar power to actually heat the water anyway? I didn't listen to what the... the well, yes, there, there's we have enough electrical power generated from the solar array for the uh, well, we electric water heaters. Electrical, though, you could have but solar water you know, heating and getting a combination. Sure. We could. And, and ultimately, we're trying to build enough headroom into the project budget so that we can incorporate an energy dashboard and the full PV that would get us to zero energy. Yes. Well, and that's why I ask. But I know ultimately it's, it's that's within our goal. reach. It's, it's ex definitely within it, reach. It, yeah, but solar is not that inexpensive to put in to do that. I, mean, I, I get that you can do it. It's a function of money. But mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's so. This is not a house. It's different. I understand that. I mean, so your uses for hot water are different. Is there a full kitchen in here? No, no, no kitchen. kitchen. There's no locker. We, we actually have very. Right. Minimal, right. The only place we have hot water is at the admin yeah. and the clinic. No, it doesn't make sense to have solar water. So this will be a food cantina, a truck that will pull up daily to serve food, meals. Okay. Our truck. Yes, yes. high school <laughs> nutrition <laughs> services. It's, it's a panel truck. truck. That truck, okay. basically where this tree is, um, here on the, the bottom of the, the wrong way, the bottom of the screen, mm -hmm. this is the um, entrance gate kind of for that food truck pull around here. And, and right now we're working with the food services to explore a canopy that'll reach out um, to, to that, but the students will either eat in the mixer or they'll eat underneath the covered outdoor space. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you, Kathy and Philip. Great update. Okay. Uh, we'll thank now you. move into our uh, construction project update. We'll ask uh, Mr. Jeff Tucker with Gilbane Construction to join us at the table. Uh, hey, while so you guys are heading back, I, I like, and I know it's a lot of people that have been a part, I like the color selections, I like the look, I like the feel, I like where you're going with this. Good job. So as Philip mentioned, we are in construction. We were able to issue a construction notice to proceed on August 22nd. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Jack. Afternoon, how's it doing? I apologize, I'm a, a fast talker, so I'll try to slow That's it down. fine with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so far to date, uh, we have pulled all the major permits, so we are off the ground and running. Um, kind of just the, the recap to where we currently stand today. We've completely dissed the site, we've mobilized the trailer, uh, we have brought the pad completely up to up to the actual elevation itself. Yep. 
Is Phil Davis your superintendent? Now? Yes, he is. Yeah. So we've got a, a total team of, uh, of five that'll be sitting out on site uh, working through this. Um, we've, go ahead, we've gone ahead and put all the silt fence up for version control. We have put one of the construction entrances already in there. The reason for the second one is because we're still working through with the county for the kind of the access road for the future for when the school opens itself. So we did have a, a great conversation earlier today about um, we just got that result. Yeah, moving okay. moving forward with uh, a temporary asphalt road for the, the second entrance there. So that's definitely uh, great progress there. We've done kind of our initial kickoff meetings with all our trade contractors and really got them on board. We are going to amplify our, our quality control measures, making sure that we're hitting exactly like the, the school's intent and design um, that's, that you've seen so far. So, um, But so far, we're, we're off and running, so a great start so far. Uh, kind of look ahead for you. Um, as if anybody drove by today, you'll actually see foundations already being dug. Where our first pour is going to be this Friday, and hopefully uh, we'll do that in you know, one or two shots. So by next week, we'll have all the foundations poured, elevator pit done, and then move in there. And then we'll continue through and prep for our casting slabs. And then uh, we're going to be looking to, to go vertical sometime, I'd say uh, mid mid to early December time frame. Uh, yeah, so we're we're trying we're looking about you know from start to finish we're looking it's the, about 12 week time frame um, to go completely you know vertical. We've got an approval from the county to use the right of way for additional casting beds. So this is a very Let's aggressive schedule. Process. We're constantly looking for opportunities to get ahead on well, the schedule for that smooth landing. All the good news for everybody is we're getting into the dry season. Yes. <laughs> so That's that correct. makes a big difference for everybody. Yeah. The, uh, having the county uh, allow us to actually use the casting side bin the right away really really helps us so we don't have to walk panels or for safety measures on our side so uh, definitely uh, great progress there um, it's been great so far working with uh, SDOC and little little been a great partner to getting things back to us answers what we need and, and really keeping the process moving so uh, so far <coughs> everything's been, been great we're still on track with the schedule and looking forward to the turnover so um, the so are we was that yeah, so absolutely. We? <laughs> uh, we are, as all, all the STOC jobs, we are looking to maximize the owner direct purchase process. So we just did the uh, the first kind of upfront change order, which is going to the board, I think, tonight. Yes. So you'll see that on the, for approval there. Um, and then, as Mark had met, mentioned earlier, uh, we did have a great uh, conversation this morning as far as kind of reaching out to our partners and looking for you know potential donations or kind of uh, outside resources to help the project itself. So as we continue to work with the district, we'll keep you up to speed how how that kind of stands. So. And we do have our groundbreaking ceremony That's right. coming up. So this coming Monday at nine o'clock, we will have the, the groundbreaking. We've got uh, all the everything ready to go. The tent, tent and chairs. We're working with John directly on making sure that's there, and then also with Kim, Kim McKnight, making sure we've got everything set up for it. Good, okay. great. Thank you, Jeff. Great update. And before we go into our third project, I'll ask our legal counsel, Mr. Carpenbucker, just to give us a quick update on some of the coordination fronts that we're working with the county on this project. Dr. Pace and I will be meeting with Don Fisher on Thursday uh, to try and keep coordination moving. We've bumped into two things just to keep you updated. One, we've moved forward to stay on schedule despite having locked down a plat because the county was <coughs> able to figure out how they're platting everything. So we're in the middle of that. Which is fine. You know, Sorry, we work through Neo City or Dan John? Neo, Neo City. City. Okay. okay. And the second component is we started out having a meeting with the county saying, okay, who will be the one point of contact dealing with Neo City so we're not getting a lot of hands in the pot? It started out, we've had some uh, additional hands attempt to get into the pot. <coughs> sure. And what that means basically is a risk of more money coming out of our pocket. So Dr. Pace and I are meeting on Thursday to resolve that um, and, and basically uh, uh, avoid uh, staff people saying, well, we want this, et cetera. And we don't have the time for that to get this done. So we're keeping you updated on the little bit of behind the scenes stuff so you're not comes to you, you know we're trying to work through it. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you for the update, Frank. We appreciate it. So we'll now move into our last project update, Den John Middle School, and I'll ask George Thomas with C.T. Shoe and Associates and Richard 
Richard Rodriguez with uh, Pernal Construction to join us at the table. George, I'll turn it over to you to talk about our project goals and objectives. Okay. The uh, project goals was to establish a 1408 uh, student station school. We've been able to do that. The campus will be occupied during construction. We've developed phasing plans along with coordination with uh, portal construction. And uh, we uh, are keeping uh, buildings two, three, four, and five. They'll be renovated and turned into new classrooms, uh, admin space. Uh, one of them is the gym, so we're adding a locker room under the gym. Uh, then one of the big goals that we uh, talked about last time we were here was the track and field that will be part of the project. And we'll be uh, expanding the existing pond and uh, coordinating with the elementary school so they can use the track and field as well as the middle school students. The, uh, currently, the documents are over at Joe Green's office. Uh, he's uh, establishing the permits. Pertle has already gotten their paperwork in, so uh, we will be ready to roll on the documents. Uh, we are doing some final coordination with the traffic mast arms uh, with the city of Kissimmee, uh, and that will have to be uh, finalized yet. Other than that, the uh, majority of the, of the uh, civil permits are uh, complete. Okay, so great. Is civil on this? Osceola, Osceola Engineering. Engineering. Thank you, George. Great update. I'll turn it over to Richard Rodriguez mm -hmm. to take us through the uh, construction update. Well, I think the first thing that we want to mention is that we, um, we aggressively put the project on the street and, and you know, the efforts led by pre-construction and um, we submitted a GMP that's within um, the budget that we presented at our last board meeting. So we're happy to announce that the that the general subcontractor community was excited <coughs> and they showed it. And so um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, other than that, right now we are preparing to mobilize. Um, we've got preliminary meetings that we're setting up with the critical subcontractors, which are going to be on site electrical specifically, um, to make sure that we establish a good running path so that when we do get an NTP, that it's not a um, let's go ahead and creep and go. We, we're looking at a shotgun start. And Rich, I believe you had north of 150 bids. Um, we had coverage on every bid, and I believe the number is well over 150 bids. So, so that's, that's excellent um, coverage. Well, what we, what we enjoyed was that we had major coverage on some of the most sensitive. Um, when you look at site, when you look at electrical, when you look at these these numbers, where other <coughs> other you know um, bids are getting one and two, and we're getting four and five. So we're pretty excited about. That. Great. Uh, so as, as Richard mentioned, um, we do have a negotiated GMP. We couldn't make the deadline for the board meeting this evening, but you'll be seeing that GMP uh, on October 2nd. And in the amount uh, that you see, uh, the 33.342 million. And that is below our uh, established construction budget. Well, I got a question about so does it help at all? I, re I recognize it couldn't make the agenda, but we could add it to the agenda tonight if we wanted to. Is that something that we, you, want, you want us to do? I think we're fine. We have a, okay. a well-defined schedule. As long as we get approval on October 2nd, okay. uh, we can issue our notice to proceed on October 8th, and, and we're good. We have a well-defined schedule, multiple okay. phases, four phases, okay. actually five, a phase one has two sub-phases. And, and, and part of, and part of the, um, the the plan for phasing the project is to be able to deliver the project to the to the staff early on. So our goal is to have the administrative areas and um, the um, music and, um, and the classroom or the um, DSE delivered over the summer. So that way they can start moving in. The worst thing in the world is to have a have a summer, have a winter move when you're trying to get administration to go in there in two weeks. So we want to give them six months. And it's those kinds of things. And they can start enjoying that, that, that the feel of their new facility. And for the most part, the buildings will be substantial by December. December 2019. Right. Will be and then a final phase. And then we'll build a parking lot up through April, and then the demolition of the balance of it when we convert the existing bus loop into the new drive, and then we convert the existing a lot of moving parts. Uh, and I've, I've lived the rebuild of Osceola and St. Cloud High School while school was occupied, and I. I it's a big, it's a big job. I mean, it's just when you got 1,500 kids there and you're building a project and they're going to school. And when we did those two projects, and the contractors were great, the kids were great, but you, 
things come, you know, as you're doing the work, all of a sudden there's lakes you didn't have before on campus when it rains and things like that. I mean, the, the, good, the good part is that when you have a CM on board early and, and you allow them to work with your design team and, and you collaborate on how to phase the project and, and say, look, this is not a 14-month project. This is really going to be an 18-month or, or, or let, let that stretch out to what it truly needs to be. That's when you have a successful job. Right. Well, having 1,400 kids out of the campus the whole time while you're doing that, that poses its own challenge. We have to, we're, we're ready for the challenge. And, and okay. the project team that we have on this project is very seasoned for an oh, occupied yeah, type construction. Yeah, first off, the, the superintendent that we have is a 35-year Pirtle veteran who has, the, who has done, done nothing basically his entire career but educational facilities. Right. And so you'll be, you'll be pleased with it. To go back to Mr. Willer's first question, is there any advantage to you if we were to approve this tonight? If, at this at this point, I don't think that you're going to okay. get any much yeah. more. We're still going to give we're you two more weeks. We're That's fine. fine. I mean, if there was, then yeah, we're we, still waiting on permitting we've and comments scheduled this and other accordingly. things. Like, okay. A lot of this has to do with windows of opportunity, you know, having getting in to complete critical phases over the summer. Of course, our first phase, uh, in addition to renovation of the admin, the CEP and the DSH. gymnasium is the new building. Correct. So fortunately, we have uh, clear land. We have some uh, site work to do, of course, some geotech, but you know, we have a good place to put that We don't that want to building. make it sound like it's easy, by the way. No, no, no. We're trying to give you two more weeks to we're work just, with. I mean, you just well, told us how easy it was. <laughs> we, we've, got, we've got the entire team that, that, that we have proposed in the GMP geared for a start. If you're ready for that, if that's what you're ready that's for, right. you don't need anything, that's what you're going to and of course, we'll be coordinating very closely with the school operations. I'm sure the Tony, the superintendent, will become very good friends with Mr. Hoyle and Absolutely. his staff and work very closely with them. Just real quick on the phasing. So buildings 300, 500, 600, I don't remember off the top, and you touched on it briefly. When that's done in July, what's happening from that point through December when we're looking at buildings 100, 200? What are three, five, and six? Um, I would love to forward to you under separate cover a very detailed um, phasing plan that shows a fence plan for each one of the phases that we've developed. We've reviewed it with the architect and presented it to the district where at every, at every change we'll, we'll, we'll shift the fence so that we have maintained 100% separation between student and staff. Um, so to, ex to explain it now will only serve to confuse it. But, but ba basically building two and three are being repurposed. So, build, you know, so one of them that's the closest to the new building is going to be admin. So we're going to go in there right away. That's the first in phase. The first phase and demo, do selective demolition of it so we can remodel it into an admin suite. Then in the later phase, we do the building that's next to it and the connector. So there'll be a new front door piece that's right by the so drop So when the building in front is demolished, that will become your new front door. And then the new building right behind buildings two and 300. And then of course the, the music building right. is in the center of the courtyard and, and the gymnasium and then, is... And that, we're not doing a lot with the music building. And in that we have um, would be temporary canopies that are going to bring the students in on through the um, through the uh, parent drop off to bring them towards that administrative area on front as we block off what I call the Starship Enterprise to demolish that. So you still you can still get around both sides, and it'll be completely separated. And we've done it in such a way that at er at every stage at every stage we maintain safety and movement for the contractor, but complete separation for staff and students. Sure. So I would request to see that visually and understand what that phasing is going to look like so I can understand it. And inevitably, one -on -one yeah, and inevitably we're going to get questions about it. It just is mm -hmm. the nature of this. Sure. So We'd I be want happy. to make sure it's beyond the, the concept of trying to follow along that I can physically see what we're talking about so that when that time comes, I'm well versed on what we've been doing and how we've been planning to get and, there. And Absolutely. The, the one thing that we'll offer is that we'll, um, Especially on Occupy Campus is one of the most important things that we understand is communication. Not you know, we're going to communicate with everybody here, but it's that visual communication that you're going to that you're going to present to staff and to um, to the students and, and the parents. So before we start to shift anything around, you'll start to put the signs of this is this is going to be your new entrance. And when those shifts come in place, that we bring up we bring additional staff to help to help facilitate that movement so that you can kind of cattle shoot the folks where they need to go after a couple of days, then they know where they go. It's not going to be all of a sudden you show up the next day to school and say, where am I supposed to be? Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, just so you know, I'm comfortable and confident that you guys will manage it properly. I just want to make sure I understand it so I can communicate it properly. Questions. I got a question. I want to get back to the summary of bidding sheet uh, where it says the contingency is $500,000. That's not even 2%. Is that enough? It's based on the risk that we 
anticipate on the project, and yes, that five hundred thousand okay. we believe. It, seems like, it looks low to me. We, we, ha revenue. we actually have more I'll take project. More, Jay. <laughs> we, we have a project uh, it's like a crazy. reserve on top of that. Should we need it? So we won't be asking for more money within the project, but just within the GMP, we to come up with those uh, unforeseen conditions. We believe that will be. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if that's the number, that's the number. I'm just thinking. I mean, yeah. it, I mean, two percent would be six hundred sixty thousand yeah. dollars. Well, the, the, so other exercise, well, we're, the other exercise, the other exercise, which right. is why we say we that. want to push out a little. The other exercise that we'll do over the next couple of weeks is going to be, you know, just a quick value engineering exercise to say, listen, there, there may be low hanging fruit that you might want to consider, yes or no. You know, we have allowances that that, that we put in there for, you know, for uh, assumptions that we may may or may not need that will then go towards the owner's contingency. But then, relative to value, value engineering, with your value engineering. Are you looking at things that are going to make the life cycle cost lower and make great, greater no. efficiencies or just lower for its no. cost? That value, value engineering is not um, chopping up scope or giving you less. It's okay. so, I, we're giving I've up seen, on I've program. I've seen a lot of people who think value we're engineering not up on is lowering for its cost. Mm -hmm. Well, um, anybody, anybody who, who, who comes in and approaches you that way then has failed you as a CEO. I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Richard. I was trying to get hurt. The, the contingencies just look low. Chairman Booth, that concludes the presentation from our facilities department. So this is your opportunity for questions and answers. Board, does anybody else have any other questions for uh, any anyone that's here today? Just remind me of the budget on Harmony Middle. It's not in the slide deck. I have it. <laughs> uh, total project budget is forty million two seventy nine two fifty eight. That's the GMP. The construction okay. GMP is 32, 366, okay. 599. Okay. Are there any other questions? Thank you all for good presentations and for being so well prepared. Mr. Weishar, okay. are you good? Thank you. Mr. Soto? Okay. Stand here. Thank you Thanks all for being here. Thank you all. Thank you. So we'll schedule.